G'day fellas and people from the interwebs, I'm your host for this afternoon, DJ Ignite. I'm not really a DJ, but neither are you. This is like the fucking, what, the fourth attempt that I've been doing this stupid tutorial? Yeah, and it's it's really hot, so you're going to have to bear with me, I'm more than likely going to stuff it up over and over again, but yeah, that's what happens when you really can't be stuffed editing a video or recordings. I just want to try and do it in one, <laughs> in one continuous thing if I can. But uh, yes, this is indeed a dubstep bass wobble tutorial in FL Studio. This is number seven, I believe. And instead of using just one plugin or a number of the same plugin, um, this is how to achieve the same wobble that I've achieved using multiple different plugins, and they're all layered together. I've just received a text message. Awesome. Yes, thank you. You don't need to tell me. Uh, I don't know what the fuck that person's just sent me, but whatever, I don't care. So, um, this is actually the beginning workings of my new song for my fourth album, which currently is going to be dubbed Synapsis, or Synoptic, or something like that, I'm not too sure. But, um, yeah, let's get on with the tutorial, shall we? So here I'm just going to play the wobble and the automation and then I'll go through how I've achieved it and then I'll just give you a preview of this song that I've been working on. So, the, the way I've done this is I've created a foundation. So, in my head, I had the idea of how I wanted the wobble speeds to go. So, wow, 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 And um, I created that using Harma. And the easiest way to do this, I've found, is to create a Harma, which is like that. I've created the... I've used the W step one preset and then once I've got the sound the way I want it using a uh, slight by slightly adjusting you know different aspects like the distortion and blah 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 and added effects or in this case just a parametric equalizer I've then duplicated it or cloned it so I've got multiple copies of the exact same thing but then I've just adjusted the speed for each one so each one is its own speed. Now one thing you've got to watch out for when doing this is remembering to adjust the speed for both the A and the B parameters on every single one. Because if you don't do that, I'll show you right now. <laughs> if I just try and speed it up a bit, you can hear the two different timbers or the two different presets colliding with each other if you will because the A and the B are different speeds. Another thing you're going to want to remember to do is by default I'm pretty actually I'll just check but I'm pretty sure that our tempo based time and global timing is different. Yeah it is. So by default when you select the W step one preset the tempo based time selector is off, but the global retriggered is on. And you actually want them the other way around. You want the tempo on, the global off. So that way, when you release the note, like here, and then play it again from here, it's not going to try and play on from that wobble. It's just going to start the wobble from the beginning again. This makes uh, creating a wobble on time uh, a lot easier because it's very difficult to fine-tune your wobble so it stays in time for, you know, four bars or more. So that's the reason why I do that. And that's why I suggest it as well. So now that I've created my foundation for a wobble... Oh, I've fucked it now, haven't I?
So I've left that there as a foundation and then I've added a buzz generator to, or two buzz generators to reinforce the bass line. And it's very simple, I've just used the sine wave for one and then I've used a fucking vocal sort of sounding thing for the other. Fuck off, fuck off, stupid thing. As you can see, when I move it from different ones, it gives it a different sound. Ah, now see this? The buzz generator has created some sort of weird thing where it doesn't stop playing. It can't even when you press stop. Best way to fix this is to just press the four stop button in the generator itself. Um, it is a bit of an issue sometimes because if you adjust parameters or anything to do with the buzz generator, even in the uh, playlist, um, it can do this weird thing where it keeps playing a note and it'll sound like shit more than likely. So yeah, if that ever happens to you, just press the stop button and it's fine again. And finally, I've used three XOSCs and I've done the exact same thing that I did with the dubby step. So I created, I used one three XOSC and, and achieved the sound that I wanted to try and get. I then fucked around with a whole bunch of these to get this built-in low frequency oscillator to work, which it does now. And uh, I've done that until it works. And then I simply just cloned it and then changed the speed for each one, which the speed isn't changing for each one. Oh, that's right. It's the cutoff derp, not the volume. Yeah, you've got to remember when you're changing the instrument properties or trying to create a wobble with 3x OSE, you don't want to uh, oscillate the volume of the low frequency. You want to oscillate the cutoff frequency, which is, yeah, there. And we'll just have a quick listen to that on its own. And a keen ear will actually tell you that there is a bit of portamento going on here, as you can see, which sort of slides the note up in it. I don't know, it makes it a bit smoother, even though it's a nice gritty wobble. And finally, to put it all together, uh, there's a lot of automation going on here to try and alter it. And as you can see here with my 3X OSC, it's being crushed a little bit, and I've got a flanger, <laughs> which I barely ever used these, but it just sounded perfect for what I wanted. And then three parametric equalizers. <laughs> And as you can see there in this equalizer just here, that's how I've changed. It's created like a sort of like a transformers transforming sound. If I if that's really the best way I can describe that sound that it creates. <laughs> Let's have a quick preview of this song and then I'll I'll surprise you guys with something.
yeah, so that's what I came up with. All right, now for this lovely surprise with the final, what, three and a half minutes that we have left. Because I know that you guys will want to try and replicate this wobble, I've done something for you. What it is, is a lovely little preset that I've already uploaded on Rapid Share, I think it is. Yeah, Rapid Share. There it is right there. Half a meg. And this is obviously what you're going to get. Mm, yeah. But um, unfortunately, in order to be able to run this, uh, we'll open this project and actually play it properly, you're going to need Harmer. That's obvious. <laughs> if you don't have Harmer, there's nothing's going to load. And also, you're going to need the plugin called Bitcrusher. Now, this can easily be downloaded by just Googling Bitcrusher. And um, I would supply it. I would zip the... Uh, this rapid share file for you so you could uh, so it would come with it and then you got it because it is a free plugin you don't have to worry about paying anything for it but uh, due to copyright reasons I can't do that unfortunately so you're just gonna have to find Bitcrush yourself or just run it without it and it'll do perfectly fine the parametric EQ and Flangus they both come with FL Studio so you shouldn't have any issues there same with the 3XOIC and the buzz generator. They should both be included, I think. And finally, uh, now that you know this and you're going to want to download it, I'm going to reinforce this point that I've been trying to reinforce for ages for this first Citrus tutorial in which people just try and click on the link. And as you can see, only a small fraction of it is hyperlinked and the rest is not. I have no idea why this has done this, but uh, a lot of people just click on it and then they just go, well, it does, the download doesn't work. And well, they're either blind or just fucking stupid because it says right here, don't click on the link. Select it, copy it and paste it into your address bar. So I'm going to show you how to do this so you know exactly what to do. Paste and go. Look at that. There is proof right there that this still works. This link for the first dubstep tutorial, it works. So stop saying that it doesn't work because I know it does and every time someone tells me that it doesn't work, I test it to make sure. I'm not too sure if uh, this tutorial, this new tutorial will have this same issue or if the link will be completely hyperlinked. But uh, there it is there at the top. That'll be put in the uh, description. And I might even put in a link to the website where you can download Bitcrusher for free. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. Anyways, that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, we've now got, what, 20 seconds left. So I'd like to thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, feel free to like it. If you want to watch more tutorials or listen to any more songs of mine, uh, feel free to subscribe. I've always got things coming on every now and then, although I've been a bit slack lately. And uh, really, that's pretty much it. So cheers for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learnt. And uh, go out there and make some music. Take it easy, guys. Farewell for now.